Introducing the key moments of modern India offers a fascinating journey through the country's tumultuous yet transformative history. From the struggles for independence to monumental political, social, and economic shifts, these moments have shaped India's identity on the global stage. Let's embark on a journey through 20 pivotal events that have defined modern India, exploring their profound impact and enduring significance. Let's delve deeper into each of these moments. Indian Independence Movement 1857-1947 The Indian Independence Movement was a historic struggle against British colonial rule in India. It encompassed various phases and methods of resistance, including non-violent protests, civil disobedience, and armed revolts. Leaders such as Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, and Subhas Chandra Bose played pivotal roles in mobilizing the masses and advocating for independence. The movement culminated in India gaining independence from British rule on August 15, 1947, after years of tireless efforts and sacrifices by countless individuals. Partition of India, 1947 the partition of British India in 1947 resulted in the creation of two independent nations, India and Pakistan. The partition was based on religious lines, with predominantly Muslim regions becoming Pakistan and the rest of British India forming India. The decision led to one of the largest migrations in human history, with millions of Hindus, Muslims, and Sikhs forced to leave their homes and relocate across the new borders. The partition also sparked widespread violence and communal riots, resulting in significant loss of life and displacement. Integration of Princely States 1947-1950 After gaining independence, India faced the challenge of integrating more than 500 princely states into the newly formed nation. Sardar Vallabhai Patel, India's first deputy prime minister and home minister, played a crucial role in persuading the princely states to accede to India rather than remain independent or join Pakistan. Through a combination of negotiations, diplomacy, and, in some cases, military action, most princely states agreed to join India, thus consolidating the territorial integrity of the nation. Constitution of India, 1950 The adoption of the Indian Constitution on January 26, 1950, marked the culmination of India's transition to a sovereign, socialist, secular, and democratic republic. The Constitution, drafted by the Constituent Assembly chaired by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, provided the framework for governance and enshrined fundamental rights and freedoms for all citizens. It laid down the principles of equality, justice, and democracy, making India one of the world's largest and most vibrant democracies. Nehruvian Era, 1947-1964 The Nehruvian Era refers to the period of leadership under Jawaharlal Nehru, India's first prime minister, from 1947 until his death in 1964. Nehru's vision for India was characterized by secularism, socialism, and non-alignment in foreign policy. His policies focused on industrialization, infrastructure development, education, and land reforms, aimed at fostering economic growth and social progress. Despite facing numerous challenges, Nehru's leadership played a pivotal role in shaping India's identity as a modern, democratic nation-state. Indo-Pak Wars, 1947-1965-1971 India and Pakistan have engaged in several wars and conflicts over territorial disputes, particularly concerning the region of Kashmir. The Indo-Pak Wars of 1947, 1965, and 1971 were significant military conflicts between the two nations. The 1971 war, in particular, resulted in the liberation of East Pakistan and the creation of Bangladesh. These wars have had far-reaching consequences for the security, stability, and relations between India and Pakistan, shaping the geopolitics of South Asia. Green Revolution, 1960s-1970s The Green Revolution in India, initiated in the 1960s and 1970s, introduced high-yielding varieties of seeds, modern agricultural techniques, and improved irrigation and infrastructure to increase food production. Led by agricultural scientists such as Dr. Norman Borlaug, the Green Revolution helped transform India from a food-deficient nation to a self-sufficient and surplus food producer. It played a crucial role in alleviating hunger, reducing poverty, and boosting agricultural productivity, although its benefits were not evenly distributed across regions and socio-economic groups. Emergency, 1975-1977, the period of emergency, declared by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi from 1975 to 1977, was a dark chapter in India's democratic history. Amid political turmoil and opposition protests, Gandhi invoked emergency powers, 
suspending civil liberties, imposing censorship, and arresting political opponents. The emergency was marked by widespread human rights abuses, including forced sterilizations and political repression. However, it also led to a resurgence of democratic activism and eventually resulted in Gandhi's electoral defeat in the subsequent elections. Mindal Commission Report, 1980s, the Mindal Commission, appointed in the 1970s to address social inequality and backwardness, submitted its report in the 1980s recommending reservations for other backward classes OBCs, in government jobs and educational institutions. The implementation of the Mindal Commission recommendations in the late 1980s and early 1990s sparked widespread debates and protests across India. While proponents argued that it was a necessary step towards social justice and inclusivity, critics raised concerns about meritocracy, caste-based politics, and the impact on higher education and employment opportunities. Assassination of Indira Gandhi, 1984 The assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi by her Sikh bodyguards in retaliation for Operation Blue Star, a military operation against Sikh militants in the Golden Temple in Amritsar, was a tragic event that sent shockwaves across India. Gandhi's assassination triggered anti-Sikh riots in several parts of the country, resulting in widespread violence, destruction, and loss of life. The event deeply scarred the nation and raised questions about communal harmony, religious tolerance, and the security of political leaders. Economic Liberalization, 1991 The initiation of economic reforms in 1991 marked a significant shift in India's economic policies. Facing a balance of payments crisis, Prime Minister Narasimha Rao's government, under the guidance of Finance Minister Manmohan Singh, implemented liberalization measures. These included deregulation, privatization, and opening up the economy to foreign investment. The reforms aimed to boost economic growth, increase competitiveness, and integrate India into the global economy. They led to significant changes in India's economic landscape, paving the way for rapid growth in sectors like information technology, telecommunications, and finance. Babri Masjid Demolition, 1992 The demolition of the Babri Masjid in Ayodhya on December 6, 1992, by Hindu nationalists sparked communal tensions across India. The disputed site, claimed by both Hindus and Muslims, had been a source of contention for decades. The demolition led to widespread riots and violence, particularly targeting Muslims. It strained inter-communal relations and raised questions about secularism and religious tolerance in India. The event also had political ramifications, leading to the rise of Hindu nationalist parties and influencing subsequent elections. Kargil War, 1999 The Kargil War was a conflict between India and Pakistan in the Kargil district of Jammu and Kashmir in 1999. Pakistani soldiers and militants infiltrated into Indian territory, triggering intense fighting between the two countries. The war lasted for over two months and resulted in significant casualties on both sides. It was a landmark event in Indo-Pakistani relations, highlighting the ongoing tensions over Kashmir. The conflict also underscored the strategic importance of the region and the risks of nuclear escalation between the two nuclear-armed neighbors. Gujarat Riots, 2002 The Gujarat Riots refers to the communal violence that erupted in Gujarat in February 2002, following the Ghadra train burning incident, in which 59 Hindu pilgrims were killed. The riots resulted in the deaths of over 1,000 people, mostly Muslims, and the displacement of thousands more. The state government, led by Chief Minister Narendra Modi, faced criticism for its handling of the situation, with allegations of complicity in the violence. The riots polarized Indian society along religious lines and raised concerns about the protection of minority rights and the rule of law. Right to Information Act, 2005 The Right to Information RTI, Act, enacted in 2005, empowers citizens to seek information from the government and promotes transparency and accountability in governance. Under the RTI Act, citizens can request access to government records and information, with certain exceptions for matters of national security and privacy. The legislation has been instrumental in exposing corruption, promoting good governance, and empowering marginalized communities to hold authorities accountable. It represents a significant milestone in India's democratic evolution and the right to freedom of information. 2008 Mumbai Attacks the 2008 Mumbai attacks were a series of coordinated terrorist attacks that took place in Mumbai, India's financial capital, between November 26 and 29, 2008. Ten Pakistani militants affiliated with the extremist group Lashkar-e-Taiba carried out the attacks, targeting multiple locations across the city, 
including the Taj Mahal Palace Hotel, Aberoi Trident Hotel, Nariman House, a Jewish community center, and the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus Railway Station. The attacks resulted in the deaths of 166 people and injuries to over 300 others. The Mumbai attacks highlighted India's vulnerability to terrorism and exposed gaps in its security infrastructure. The incident led to a significant overhaul of India's counter-terrorism measures, including the establishment of specialized counter-terrorism units, enhanced intelligence sharing mechanisms, and improvements in coastal security. It also strained relations between India and Pakistan, with India accusing Pakistan of harboring and supporting the perpetrators of the attacks. Anna Hazare's anti-corruption movement, 2011, the anti-corruption movement led by social activist Anna Hazare in 2011 garnered widespread public support and mobilized mass protests across India. The movement demanded the passage of the Jan Lokpal Bill, which aimed to establish an independent ombudsman, Lokpal, to investigate and prosecute cases of corruption involving public officials. Hazare's hunger strikes and civil disobedience tactics captured the public imagination and put pressure on the Indian government to address the issue of corruption. Although the Jan Lokpal bill was not immediately passed, the anti-corruption movement brought the issue of corruption to the forefront of public discourse and catalyzed legislative and institutional reforms. It underscored the growing demand for transparency, accountability, and ethical governance in India's political and administrative systems. Nirbhaya Case, 2012 The Nirbhaya case refers to the brutal gang rape and murder of a 23-year-old physiotherapy student in Delhi on December 16, 2012. The horrific nature of the crime sparked widespread outrage and protests across India, with citizens demanding justice and systemic changes to address the issue of sexual violence against women. The victim, nicknamed Nirbhaya, meaning, fearless, became a symbol of the broader problem of gender-based violence and discrimination in India. The Nirbhaya case prompted legislative reforms, including amendments to India's criminal laws to strengthen punishment for sexual offenses and enhance the safety and security of women. It also led to increased public awareness and advocacy efforts to challenge patriarchal attitudes and promote gender equality. The case marked a turning point in India's discourse on sexual violence and catalyzed a national movement to combat gender-based discrimination and violence. Demonetization, 2016 On November 8, 2016, the Indian government, under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, announced the demonetization of 500 rupees and 1,000 rupees banknotes, constituting 86% of the country's currency in circulation at the time. The move was aimed at curbing black money, corruption, counterfeit currency, and funding for terrorist activities. Demonetization led to widespread disruption to India's economy, with long queues at banks, cash shortages, and negative impacts on sectors reliant on cash transactions, particularly the informal economy and rural areas. Critics argued that demonetization failed to achieve its stated objectives and disproportionately affected the poor and marginalized segments of society. Abrogation of Article 370, 2019, Article 370 of the Indian Constitution granted special autonomous status to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, including significant autonomy over its internal affairs. On August 5, 2019, the Indian government revoked Article 370 and bifurcated the state into two union territories, Jammu and Kashmir, and Ladakh. The decision was accompanied by a massive security crackdown, including the deployment of additional troops and restrictions on movement and communication. The abrogation of Article 370 sparked widespread controversy and protests, both domestically and internationally. Supporters argued that it would lead to greater integration of Jammu and Kashmir with the rest of India and promote development and security in the region. Critics, however, raised concerns about the erosion of autonomy, human rights violations, and the lack of consultation with the people of Jammu and Kashmir. The move also escalated tensions between India and Pakistan, with Pakistan condemning it as a violation of international law and exacerbating the Kashmir dispute. These moments represent significant milestones in modern Indian history, reflecting the complexities, challenges, and aspirations of a rapidly evolving nation. Each event has left a lasting impact on India's social, political, and economic landscape, shaping the country's trajectory and identity in the 21st century.